the Umi Digi A15 series. Is it better than the A14 and the A13? Let's check it out. So here we are with the Umi Digi A15. Now in the past I have reviewed some of the other A series phones and they've been okay. But the last one I did had a problem with the HDMI on the camera. I wonder if they fixed it for this one. Anyway, let's get unboxing. So as you can see, there's no phone because it's already taken out. Inside the box we've get the manual. As you can see, code number there, MP33. We have some styrofoam to keep things uh, still, I guess. We've got the 18 watt charger, fast charger there. And it's fairly solidly built. Yeah, I mean, it's got a bit of weight to it, so it's not your typical cheap and nasty Chinese power adapter. That's uh, not bad at all. Here's this side, we have a SIM tool and we have a nice red USB-C to USB-A cable. Very nice indeed. But how about the phone? What's that like? Well, here it is. Now straight out of the box, the Umi Digi A15 comes with a case pre-installed. So let's get that off and see what it feels like in the hand. Right, here we go. We can just get it off there. That's uh, nice and snug. Okay, so as you can see, the case is kind of tinted. It's got a bit of a dark purpley tint to it. Quite interesting, that. But here is the actual phone. And as you can see, it is quite a slender phone. Not bad at all. Quite a nice form factor there. Feels pretty good in the hand. Not too bad. So on the side, we have our fingerprint center and power button. So we'll press that to power it up while we're charging. We've got our volume rockers here. On the bottom, we've got our USB-C input, one microphone and speaker. On this side, we've got our SIM tray, which can also hold a micro SD card up to one terabyte in size. And we've got a programmable button, which we can program to do whatever we want. On the top of the device, we have a headphone jack and the other mic. Yes, this has stereo mics. And it's just booted up. So let's peel off this little screen protector here and take a look at that screen. Wow, look at that. So apparently this screen is, be quiet, we'll turn that down, that's getting annoying. Apparently this screen is up to 500 nits. So let's put on the top brightness. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is pretty bright. I think it's too bright for the camera, actually. Now, it comes pre-installed with Android 13, but it did have a Yumi Digi software update the day I switched it on originally, which was yesterday, and that was August 29th. As you can see, it is quite snappy. I'm gonna put the specs of the phone over there so you can take a look at the specs, but it's certainly a snappy little device, especially for the budget one. It's got all your typical options there for Android 13, as you'd expect. In fact, we put auto rotate on because I need that on for later. We've got NFC as well, so you can do your on, uh, automatic payments with this. And we've also got a dark theme on or off. We'll uh, keep that uh, off actually. So as far as software is concerned, we've got the usual array of Google apps, including this nice Find My Device app, official Play Store, and so on. In fact, there doesn't seem to be any bloatware on here at all. Everything you see here is what's pre-installed. That's it. Now, taking a look around the back, we do have a couple of cameras. Now, the cameras do vary in quality and they are actually different specs. So we've got the main 64 megapixel up here. We've got a wide angle down here and a macro, plus an LED flash. The cameras themselves are not too bad, better than what I've expected on other Yumi Digi A series devices. We'll take a look at them later on. So taking a look in the actual options of the phone, we'll just go to settings here. You will see that this is running Android 13. Hang on, we go to about phone. And as you can see right there, Android 13. 
and we got the CPU which is a T616. Total memory built into the phone is 256 gigabytes but as I said you can update that to one terabyte using a micro SD card. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty decent, not too bad. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the quality of those cameras. And here we are checking out the camera in the daylight. Now unfortunately it is teeming down today. It was nice and sunny this morning but now it's uh, obviously not. So this is the front video camera test in daylight. And uh, yeah, it seems pretty good on the screen for what I can see. So let's check out the back camera. So here we are taking a video with the back camera. It's 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it looks pretty stable here on the screen. Not too bad at all. How it's gonna look when I put it onto the PC is another thing, but it's not too bad here. I have got the digital stabilization switched off by the way. So as you can see, the camera wasn't that bad, was it? Pretty decent. Now, definitely, I do not think that that 1080p video is actually 1080p. It seems to be upscaled 720p. You can tell by the jaggies when you've got a diagonal line on the screen. Definitely not a real 1080p signal there. But as a photograph camera, not too bad. And the video did seem pretty decent. Now, previous Yumi Digi devices that I have filmed did have problems with focus going in and out. It was really bad on autofocus, but on this one, the focus stayed rock solid. So I'm glad they got that sorted out. So here we are now taking a look at YouTube. Now this is a 4K video, but I just wonder what type of quality this uh, screen can go up to. I don't think we're gonna get up to 4K. No, we're not, but we should be able to get a 1080p stream playing without any issues. So yeah, we're on 1080p there. And yeah, no problem whatsoever. Very nice. Now, to be honest, we shouldn't expect this to play 4K videos anyway, because it's not a 4K screen, so it's kind of pointless. But yeah, it's playing very well there. No problems whatsoever. But how about gaming? Well, this device boasts to have some good CPU power and GPU power. Let's give it a try with some gaming. Okay, so here we go with Daytona. Yeah, not Daytona, Daytona. This is a remake of Daytona, as you've guessed. But we're gonna pick the actual Daytona courses. Let's go with Dinosaur Canyon. So I can tell you now that the controls are very responsive. The play is just as good as it does on my Pixel 7 Pro.
はいけないのけ Not bad as a games machine. Yes, it did fail at running Nintendo GameCube, but everything does. Now, one thing that people usually get upset with me about is that I never show the radios working on these things. So I've got my headphones here. Let's just get them over there. Let's plug in the headphone jack and let's give the radio a try. All right. No, we don't want to set up Google Assistant, go away. Let's give the radio a try. Now in this room we've got lots of Wi-Fi and stuff so I'm not sure how well it's going to pick up a signal but we'll find out. So let's get the volume turned all the way up. Okay, it's picking up interference so um, let's uh, search for the station. And there we go. Looks like uh, picking up a baseball game. Next station. Now that's about as much as we're going to get by the looks of it, just a baseball game. Yeah, this part of Japan doesn't have many radio stations and, you know, the ones that it does have are pretty useless anyway. But anyway, the radio does work and as you can see, you can also record your radio station and add your favourites. Oh, how do we get that off? Go on. So there you have it. That is the Yumi Digi A15, a pretty decent entry level telephone. Link in the video description down below if you're interested in picking one up. Till next time guys, keep on gaming, take it easy and enjoy your games. See ya.